Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Google Ads developer mini-series on logging and monitoring. In this video, we'll bring our foundational understanding of logging and monitoring to new heights to see what a cloud-based logging and monitoring solution could look like for your Google Ads API integration. If you find this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be notified of future videos. By default, client library logging happens locally, but we recommend implementing a solution that stores your Google Ads API application logs to the cloud. Logging to the cloud offers better scalability and addresses large-scale application considerations like redundancy and distributed logs aggregation. The cloud may offer additional security advantages over on-prem solutions. Further, many cloud logging solutions come with built-in monitoring and alerting capabilities, so you get all of these features in one cloud-based solution. If you're convinced and you want to store your Google Ads API logs to the cloud, I'm happy to tell you there are several ways you can do so. I'll discuss the pros and cons of each solution, but ultimately this decision depends on your application needs and the capabilities of your toolset. One option for getting your log data into the cloud is to output your logs locally and then collect and send them in a background process on your machine. For instance, you could update your client library configuration to specify a destination file for the logs output and set up a daemon process that parses the file and posts data to your chosen cloud provider. Similarly, using Google Compute Engine to run your application allows you to install what's called an ops agent which can be configured to send your logs to Google Cloud Logging and your metrics to Google Cloud Monitoring. The Ops Agent handles system logs and metrics collection by default and lets you specify additional custom log files and parsing logic. Next, you can implement direct-to-cloud logging within your application code by implementing a logging interface or adding individual log statements throughout your code base. For example, Google Cloud Logging offers client libraries for all of the languages supported by the Google Ads client libraries, except for Perl. It also offers a REST API for other languages, including Perl, so you can incorporate cloud logging statements directly into your Google Ads API integration. Note that the full request and response logs, which are available out of the box by enabling built-in client library logs, aren't available from the application code. That's because request and response logs are accessed and logged by gRPC interceptors that are instantiated within the Google Ads package. Some request and response information will still be available from the application code, like error information in the exception object, but successful responses expose less detail. For example, in most cases, the request ID for a successful request is not accessible from the Google Ads API response objects. There is a way around this limitation, which is to create a custom gRPC interceptor and pass it into your Google Ads API service instances. By implementing a custom interceptor, you're able to access and log request and response details as they pass through your application. You can implement logging to the cloud from within the interceptor so that request and response data are logged immediately as they pass through and don't need to be stored locally. You can also implement custom logging and metrics logic here, for example, to calculate the elapsed time of a request. This is a powerful option, but not the most straightforward if you're new to gRPC interceptors. To make this easier for you, we've implemented an example custom interceptor in Python with comments explaining implementation requirements. While this is possible in Python, it might not be available in every Google Ads client library. If your client library doesn't expose a custom interceptor argument for service instantiators, we encourage you to create an issue in that client library's GitHub repository to request it. Once your logs are in the cloud, application monitoring becomes much more accessible. We've already discussed some of the benefits of monitoring in the previous episode, but what does it look like in practice? Performance metrics are a key component of monitoring. A solid monitoring solution starts with identifying which metrics you'll use to capture key performance indicators like latency, throughput, and ratio of successful requests. Some examples of latency metrics include request duration, or the amount of time it takes a user to see results after triggering an event, request duration at the subsystem granularity, such as how long it takes for an individual API call to return a response, 
and job duration, which may consist of multiple API calls and other work. Throughput, on the other hand, is captured by metrics like queries per second, size of data transferred per second, number of I.O. operations per second, resource utilization, like CPU or memory utilization, and size of the processing backlog, which could be measured in number of threads. Log-based metrics are another component of application monitoring. Depending on your implementation, this could include performance metrics, but for logs-based metrics, this typically includes request and response details and custom application data. Some examples of log-based metrics include error count, request count, and request size. Most monitoring tools allow you to segment these metrics even further. For instance, we could break down error count by error type, request count by Google Ads API service, and request size by customer ID. Segmenting metrics in this way provides a much clearer picture of our application and improves the ability to debug, optimize performance, and understand user experience. As an alternative to log-based metrics, you can export metrics directly from your application. For example, Google Cloud Monitoring provides client libraries to integrate metrics into your application code that can be instantiated and exported at once, which can be more efficient than extracting them or building them on top of the application logs. This video series focuses on metrics that are built on top of exported logs or that are included in the logs themselves, but creating and exporting logs directly is another option to consider. Many cloud logging tools also offer a monitoring solution that's built directly on top of your logs. One example is the Google Cloud Operations Suite, which includes cloud logging and monitoring. Google Cloud Monitoring provides the ability to build metrics based on data in Google Cloud Logging. With those metrics established, as well as any performance metrics you've captured, you can then build dashboards to analyze your application and configure alerts for things like error spikes. Before we wrap up, let's walk through a complete example to tie it all together. First, let's say we decide to capture elapsed time and send it to the cloud using one of the options we discussed. Next, within our cloud solution, we can configure a metric based on that elapsed time value. Once we have that metric, we can create a dashboard to understand our application performance through elapsed time. We could, for instance, calculate average elapsed time per request, broken down by service. Lastly, we can configure alerting to notify us when the average elapsed time for a particular service is abnormally high. This could use a pre-configured threshold, or depending on the offerings of your tooling, anomaly detection. Stay tuned for future episodes where we'll see this example in action. That's all for this video. As always, we welcome your feedback and hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.